Alrighty everybody, hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my Q4 2023 uh, favourite books. This is my 10 favourite books from October, November and December 2023. We are going to be counting down from 10 to 1 with 1 being my favourite. This video will shortly be followed by my favourite books of 2023 overall which takes my 4 favourites videos together and pits them all together to find out the overall winner. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and get started. Dane reads... So at number 10 we have Wizards of Once by Cressida Cowell and this is a fun little middle grade book by the author of How to Train Your Dragon but this is basically the first book in a new series. It's basically a series, uh, it's got wizards, uh, it's got witches, it's been a while since I read it now so I, I can't remember the finer details. Um, it does have witches so it has like wizards, barbarians and then like witches and the witches are bad. Um, and yeah, the wizards and the barbarians have long been kind of enemies and then uh, like a teenage boy and a teenage girl from each camp kind of ends up joining one another to uh, to save the world by battling away the uh, resurgence of the, the witches. So lots of fun, do check it out. At nine we have This Much Is True by Miriam Margulies. I think that's how you say her name, I still haven't figured it out. So this is the non-fiction autobiography by uh, Miriam Margulies who, um, she was in Blackadder and a lot of those shows. She was Professor Sprout in the Harry Potter movies. She's also just a bit of a national treasure. She goes viral a lot for the crazy things she says in interviews. She's like an uh, octogenarian Jewish lesbian, so what's not to like about that? Um, and yeah, it's her, her uh, memoir, really moving, really beautifully written, just very interesting as well. You could enjoy that memoir even if you weren't necessarily um, a Margulies fan. At number eight, we have David Attenborough, Life on Air. So funnily enough, um, Attenborough and Margulies are kind of contemporaries. Um, and actually, Margulies' first experiences on radio and doing voiceovers and stuff had a lot in common with what Attenborough was talking about. What's really interesting about Life on Air, for me at least, is it covers like the early days of broadcast journalism. Um, it covers what it was like for him when he you know, first got into radio and then television, when people didn't really know what they were doing. He kind of got into it by accident. Um, he sort of followed his, his, his passion for the natural world and you know we ended up with David Attenborough another national treasure another cracking uh, memoir so at number seven we have the Midnight Library by Matt Haig uh, and this is basically um, I guess you call it like a contemporary fantasy almost book urban fantasy I don't, I don't know I don't know not good with genres you know but the principle here is that somebody not enjoying their life very much they try to uh, end themselves and they end up in the midnight library where they can basically take these books off the shelves and go and live their life um if they'd followed various other paths and whatnot um, and they have to find what what the right life is for them before it kind of turns to midnight in the library so it's kind of like a, it's almost like the butterfly effect in that respect you see all these different potential lives that they could have lived and um not all of them are good you know, read it, find out. Then we have Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. So this one almost defies <laughs> description. Basically, it's like a drug-addled trip through America, through the seedy underbelly of America. Um, our main character has uh, been involved in some sort of accident and their face is heavily disfigured um, and then they're traveling around in the thrall of like uh, a male to female transitioning transgender woman um, I suppose she's transitioned but I don't I think it's not she's not fully transitioned you know um, and yeah they go up to all sorts of hijinks like they'll go into people's houses to uh, have a viewing with the potential to move there and buy the house but really they're just emptying out their medicine cabinet so they can get high on all the various pills it's just classic paul in it it's non-linear as well but it does kind of all come together at the end in such a way that makes you think Okay, so at number five we have Q by Christina Daltra. So she was the author who wrote Vox uh, and Q, or Masterclass as it is in North America. It's basically kind of a riff on uh, the Chinese social scoring system. It's a bit like that Black Mirror episode where everyone had like a points value. Uh, everyone has like a Q score, which is a bit like an IQ score, and that determines what jobs you can get, you know, determines your status in life basically and the the way that your kids perform can affect you as their parent you know so it, it kind of covers all of that there's a lot of people you know people want a high Q score because that means they can live a good life but 
do they really live a good life? Uh, our main character is a teacher who kind of goes a bit rogue. Um, and we see it all from her point of view. But her husband, you know, he's trying to keep his Q score high. And they, they really don't... It's not a functioning relationship they have, let's put it that way. And that's how it begins, and it just goes downhill from there. Then we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I, I learned after reading this that this is part of a series she's done on, like, powerful women characters. Evelyn Hugo is basically a fictional movie star, and, yeah, she's had seven husbands. She summons somebody um, to sort of take down her life story. There's actually a bit of a mystery in why she chose this particular kind of young up-and-coming journalist rather than someone more established and that's revealed at the end. But yeah, she tells the story of her life through her seven husbands and, you know, it's just a really... I like books like this where they, they're kind of a character study and they just cover the life from start to finish of one character. Um, it was just really well done. Okay, then at number three we have To Be A Cat by Matt Haig. Uh, I picked this up from the book exchange at my local supermarket. Uh, so it was just like, you know, randomly saw it, picked it up, paid a pound that went to charity. And it was great. It's a middle grade book. Something went wrong. It's a middle... Again in a few seconds. Yes, thank you, Google. It's a middle grade book about um, a kid who, like, one day randomly wakes up in the body of a cat. Well, not so randomly, there is a little bit of purpose behind it. Um, and it covers what life is like as a cat. Uh, also, it turns out a lot of the cats that we know may have once been humans. Um, but as I say, it's, it's uh, uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, but for like middle grade readers, like 10 year olds, 11 year olds or whatever, a lot of fun. There is a, uh, a head teacher at the school who's super sinister. Um, not quite like Miss Trunchbull, who's just like a physical bully. This is more of like a sort of a sinister, underhanded evil um, that creeped me out quite a lot. She's more of a Dolores Umbridge, but even then she was kind of physical as well. This is the kind of head bullying head teacher that doesn't have to lay a hand on you to scare the pants off you, you know? And number two, we have Hitler's Canary by Sandy Toxvig. So um, this is a novel, but it's kind of based on the real world experiences of her father uh, in the Danish resistance during the Second World War. Toxvig is a presenter and broadcaster. Um, another lesbian who is not quite as old as Miriam Margulies, but I'm sure the two of them have probably met each other at some point. As Margulies said in her biography, people are constantly saying, you should meet so-and-so, she's a lesbian too. And what with the two of them being roughly similar ages? I mean, I guess one generation apart, but um, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, so Toxvig, I know her mostly as... Um, well, I guess she did a bunch of documentaries and then she hosts QI, which is a TV show that I love. I think she also hosted uh, The Great British Bake Off for a while. Um, but yeah, this book is kind of YA-ish, but with some pretty dark themes. Because again, it is dealing with, you know, the Nazi invasion of her home, home country of Denmark. Um, and yeah, Hitler's Canary was what, what, what Denmark was called because... You know, Hitler rang the bell and the canary would sing, basically. Um, but as we learn in, in Toxwig novel, there was like a very active resistance going on there. Um, it's just like, it's everything that the book thief wasn't that I wanted it to be. You know, a good wartime book um, that's written with emotion and that didn't make me angry. And at number one, we well, it did make me angry, but it made me angry at the Nazis. Uh, anyway... Not the author. <laughs> At number one, All the World's a Stage by Terry Pratchett. So this is stage plays of three Discworld uh, books. It has Feet of Clay, which is actually the first Discworld book that I ever read, um, a City Watch book. It had Unseen Academicals, which is about when football comes to Ankh-Morpork, or soccer for you Americans. And then it had The Rinse Cycle, which is based on uh, the light, fantastic, and sorcery, but with a, a bit of some of the other witches plays thrown in as well, uh, witches novels thrown in. And yeah, as I say, it's stage plays, Discworld stage plays. Really fascinating to read them. I would love to go and see them, um, but it was still cool to read them because reading them in the format of a stage play and they have been adapted at times to, you know, take advantage of the, you know, unique things that stage plays have to offer, as well as the unique drawbacks of putting on a stage play or the unique limitation, should I say. Um, and because of that, when I read them, it, it was kind of like rediscovering them or reading them for the first time. And um, I'm a huge Discworld fan, so I loved it. What more can I say? 
So there we have it. There are my top 10 favorites of Q4 of 2023. As always, uh, keep your eyes peeled for my overall year favorites. That will be coming soon. I've uh, linked below, if I've remembered, to where you can check out reviews of any of these that I've done. Uh, as always, hit, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.